Everybody, it's Tyler here at the Championships checking in team number 1114, Symbotics Hall of Fame legendary team here at Championships. Uh, the robot this year has been drastically improved throughout the entire season. You know, coming in, they started late in Canada, could only start building in week four, uh, and you saw that progression as they kept getting better and better and better. And here they are at the World Championships, looking great so far. And to help me speak more about this robot, by the way, I have Nolan, Liam, and Elliot. And we'll be following that full cargo path all the way through. You gotta take a look at this uh, indexing tower area they have, really cool. Of course, show off their climbers as well too. Check out more about this incredible machine coming up here on Behind the Bumpers. Your destination for first content, updates, and gaming. Welcome, Welcome to the fun. First Updates Now is supported by the Milwaukee School of Engineering. MSOE offers week-long summer camps where high school students get to preview college by living on campus, exploring engineering programs, experimenting in labs, meeting with professors, and participating in fun group activities. Are you ready to experience STEM at MSOE? Visit msoe.edu slash summer to learn more and register. First Updates Now is supported by Stryker Careers. First alumni and mentors are making Stryker a top priority for their internships and careers. That's because Stryker knows that those in first are the leaders and innovators of tomorrow. If you want to help make the world a better place by creating life-saving medical devices and technology, get started at careers.stryker.com. So we're going to start out on the uh, intake area, Nolan. Talk to me about uh, some of the design, what's gone into it. Looks like you've had a little bit of battle damage on it too, so talk to me more about it. So yeah, so for our intake, we went with just a Mechanum roller. We we decided to go with a through the bumper just for simplicity's sake. So the Mechanums really help us, so we can pick up basically on the edge, and then it just centers the ball into our intake. So you want to drop it, Liam? You have to enable the robot. So we just take the Mechanum wheels on the sides, and then just centers it and feeds it up into our indexer. So with our indexer, it's kind of like a wall of wheels. We just did that because we don't really like dealing with polycord and sure. this just simplifies everything. So on the inside, if you want to feed some balls, we have two light sensors to tell us when we have balls. So we can see now that our indexer is split into two parts. So when the top light sensor is triggered, the top rollers stop running, but the bottom ones keep running. So when we feed the second one, Everything stops and the LEDs flash blue to tell our driver when we have two balls and can go shoot. Looking at your robot here, uh, you know, we've seen teams go with a more compliant intake. You definitely have a very rigid intake on it. When we were looking at design, uh, why was that the best fit for 1114? Uh, we have always kind of had beefier intakes than yes. other teams. And so we just decided that with a beefier intake, we can do, with the swerve drive especially, we can just like kind of turn away and not have to worry about the intake getting hit as much. But as you can see, it's still kind of beat up, but but it's still, still working, all right? So yeah. yeah, for sure. And how about from a wheel choice standpoint? Did you experiment with any other types of materials or wheels or anything like that at all? Uh, no, we went with mechanics first and just kind of worked right away. Uh, and then on on your your wall of wheels, as you say, is, is this kind of the same thing where this is a wheel you picked out and that's what you went with? Yeah, we didn't originally have it split into two parts. Gotcha. But then that just made the programming to get the balls in the right spots a lot more complicated, and so splitting it apart just made everything super simple. Let's move on to your shooter. Liam's going to talk a little bit more about what's going on. That uh, love to hear more about uh, the uh, the hood that you have itself. Uh, you know, Symbotics uh, uh, sword drive this year, so no no turret necessarily with that. Just love to hear uh, how everything's come together for you and how it's been working. So for our shooter, we were very limited with our resources this year. Yes. So uh, one of our sponsors, Vican, uh, provided us access to their water jet. So we designed the shooter to be able to use as many like plates as possible and avoid that machine work on us. So we have like about five shafts, four plates total. Just put it all together and it all works. And then we have the, um, the two position hood here so that if we want to shoot from the fender, like if our tracking isn't working, we can just pop that back and we have a preset for it. Where's kind of the sweet spot for 1114 on the field to shoot from? Just around the outside of the tarmac. Sure. We find have been the most consistent. Uh, and then looking at, you know, as mentioned, your team didn't really get to start meeting together until week four in the season. So uh, as I mentioned earlier, we've seen such a, a great progression of your team ramp up through competitions. Were there any modifications uh, from event to event or is it just more about honing in and tuning stuff? The shooter was pretty consistent at our first event. So it, it stayed pretty much the same. Uh, it's pretty much just been the working on that tuning and making sure it's 100 percent. Sure. Uh, let's start to wrap up and go out talk to Elliot more about your uh, climbing mechanism. So show off, uh, of course, where your climber is. Uh, if we can show up anything in regards to the climb sequence and maybe narrate that too, that would be awesome as well. Yeah, definitely. So uh, throughout the season, uh, 
in the build season. Uh, with limited time and resources, we wanted to make a climb that would be quick to build and still be able to do uh, the traversal bar. So this is uh, the, our climb. It's uh, inspired by uh, 3847 Spectrum. Sure. Uh, we use the two bars here that can be winched by a uh, strap here that's connected to a motor and a gearbox. We use two planetaries on a Falcon on an 18 to one. When the climber goes up, it's tensioned by the surgical tubing that keeps it the strap tension. So yeah, let's say deployed. If you can just kind of narrate like each step as we go through what it's actually doing on the field. Yeah, definitely. So as we go up, the uh, the strings are loosened by the motor, and when we go all the way back, the pneumatic cylinders fire in order to get us the height that we need to get to the mid uh, mid bar. Once we go to the mid bar, we pull ourselves back all the way up using the strap. And then we want to get the bar onto these passive hooks in order to get to the next bar. So we bring the pneumatic cylinders back down and we get ourselves onto the bar. What's your current like uh, timing at championships right now for climbing traversal? Our time right now is about 18 seconds to get to the traversal bar uh, with about around a five second uh, setup time. Sure. So looking looking as we go, you know, in the playoffs and that sort of thing, for 11-14 for in about 18 seconds, what is kind of like from a cost benefit standpoint uh, where you might decide to say, hey, we're just gonna stay on the field and shoot instead of going to the climb, especially in playoffs when RP is not a factor? Uh, as seen at our uh, provincial event, uh, we stayed out during the, the uh, elimination matches for uh, 2056 and uh, 4152 to climb. Uh, we found that that uh, they had fa a little bit of faster climb than us. Sure. So with uh, their faster climb and we had a very accurate shooter, we were able to get out and get more balls. Yeah, yeah. to me, like your, your, uh, your tele op shooting has been so great this year. So just seeing that efficiency, I, I think I'd expect that going to the playoffs here at Champs. You yes. never know, right? Things change, but uh, your team's been so good that way that I can't wait to see more about it. So 1114, thanks a lot for taking the time to tell us about your robot. Of course, wish you best of luck at Championships. We know you're gonna do awesome and can't wait to see more. Thanks a lot for taking the time. Thank you very much. First Updates Now is supported by the Milwaukee School of Engineering. MSOE offers week-long summer camps where high school students get to preview college by living on campus, exploring engineering programs, experimenting in labs, meeting with professors, and participating in fun group activities. Are you ready to experience STEM at MSOE? Visit msoe.edu slash summer to learn more and register. Thanks to Stryker Careers for their support in this video. First alumni and mentors are making Stryker a top priority for their internships and careers. That's because Stryker knows that those in first are the leaders and innovators of tomorrow. If you want to help make the world a better place by creating life-saving medical devices and technology, get started at careers.stryker.com. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now and check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.